Hi, my name is Dale Overton. I'm the CEO of Overton Environmental Enterprises out of Winnipeg, and we are the manufacturers of EcoTea. Today, I'm going to talk about how to improve the bottom line on your farm using EcoTea, a diverse biological crop input. I started my career off looking at aquatic invertebrates and aquatic systems and trying to understand um, how healthy systems look and how polluted systems look. And about 12 years ago, I shifted my focus into microbial ecology, looking specifically at how microbes can influence plant growth and development and soil health. This is something I find truly interesting and I'm really passionate about it. That knowledge base has allowed me to understand how to build microbial communities for specific growing systems. And that's kind of what EcoT is. It is a diverse microbial inoculant that we've developed uh, by incorporating various ecological techniques to growing microbes. So you might want to call it compost, but we use more like engineered biopiles so that we can actually coax specific functional microbes that are typically missing from most systems into uh, one product. It's the only biological product on the market that comes with a biostimulant package. So we've spent the past 12 years understanding how certain biostimulants can actually stimulate and select for microbial groups and functions. And we've quantified this using metagenomic profiling and all sorts of different kind of genetic and field trial data. So uh, this has been a very long time coming and the product really does work quite effectively. Really what I want to talk about today is how microbes can actually improve your bottom line. How using microbes create a higher net profit on the farm. There's a lot of different biological products on the market. For us, we've had a long-standing track record. The product was developed initially about 20 years ago, uh, and I took over about 12 years ago, and we've since been constantly developing the product to make it better and, and studying it so that we can understand how it works better. One of the things I really want to focus on is how microbes can actually improve nutrient use efficiency. Uh, and they do that in a few different ways. One of those ways is plants release root exudates. For example, iron, uh, a plant needs iron. It'll release an exudate that will signal a microbe to pull out that iron. So for every mineral that a plant requires, there's a microbe that actually unlocks it in the soil. Soils aren't necessarily homogenous, and yes, there are all sorts of microbes in your soil, and people will say, yes, there's a billion bacteria in one teaspoon of soil, but what are those bacteria doing? Are they actually plant beneficial, or are they just kind of there, not necessarily doing anything that's going to impact that plant growth and development? So EcoT puts those organisms there to make sure that they're there with pinpoint placement. Many microbes are actually endophytic, you know, they grow inside with the plant. So for example, mycorrhizal fungi are endophytic bacteria. And these are very, very good, particularly at unlocking phosphorus. Phosphorus is obviously one of those elements that everybody um, is using at fairly high levels simply because it doesn't necessarily become available unless you have those microbes. And if you don't have the microbes, phosphorus tends to get locked up in the soil. So what we've tried to do is create that whole community of microbes that's actually good at doing all of those different things, or at least just making it a little bit better so that, for example, you can reduce some of your inputs and still maintain those high yields that you've been looking for. And we've actually been able to prove this time and time again. <laughs> This particular diagram uh, is something that I think is really, uh, really, really descriptive about what a good, healthy rhizosphere or root zone should look like. And here, for example, we've got uh, our plant root hairs. And around those plant root hairs, we have bacterial colonies that are either forming those endophytic relationships or just kind of consuming those sugars and releasing nutrients or creating enzymes that allow plants to have uh, a much bigger root mass, so indole-3-acetic acid, for example. Um, you have actinomyces bacteria, um, like streptomyces, for example. They uh, perform all sorts of different roles in that system, creating plant hormones, but also creating antibiotics that keep disease pressure down. You've got 
amoebas and flagellates and these protozoans that actually consume the bacteria and release the nitrogen that they consume from those bacteria right in the rhizosphere. They'll also consume the nitrogen that you put down as fertilizer. And this is really one of the, the big benefits of having a lot of bacteria. They're not actually parasitizing the, the nutrients. They actually hold those nutrients in that system through their growth and reproduction so that it becomes late, available further down the season. So what we've actually found is with EcoT specifically, you can reduce your inputs anywhere from 10 to 20 percent and still see very, very significant uh, yields and actual no difference from, let's say, for example, 100 uh, pounds of nitrogen. So if you put 100 pounds of nitrogen or you put 80 pounds of nitrogen and use a biological, you see that reduction in nitrogen. As prices for fertilizers go up, this is something that I think farmers can really, really benefit from and we've seen it time and time again. So. The ultimate goal is to create a much healthier root zone that creates a much healthier plant. And microbes do that, and they do it all the time. How can we save money and increase production? We've done some trial work with uh, the Patterson Global Foods at their research center. And this particular uh, trial I'm looking at was done in 2020 uh, on wheat, and it was used our, our dry seed dressing and our liquid seed dressing product, which you can actually see in the background here. We've got them displayed. In this case, we were able to uh, successfully reduce the nitrogen in the plots to uh, by 20%. So 80 pounds of nitrogen and 20 pounds of phosphorus performed equally as good as the broadcast 100 pounds urea and 20 pounds of, of phosphorus. So reducing that 20 pounds of nitrogen and you're performing equally as well as 100 pounds. So, you know, that's where the cost of the biological is so low that you're offsetting that cost and now you're increasing your net profits. And when you have lots of acres, that really starts to add up. So we did this across a whole line of different fertility measurements and different inoculants and whatnot. Uh, so we've got some really good data that supports that EcoT can in fact help you reduce some of your fertility uh, inputs and still keep high protein and high yields. We also did the same thing, except this time we did it with peas. Um, and with peas, uh, we didn't put any nitrogen down in this case. Well, actually, as a control, they put down 60 pounds of nitrogen, uh, 30 pounds of phosphorus, uh, which was one of the better performers, actually. Um, but in this case, where we used eco -tea, uh, our liquid eco -tea seed dressing at a half rate of uh, a rhizobium inoculant, we saw um, about 86 bushels an acre, which is about four bushels an acre better than the other respective treatment. So um, that's uh, results that we thought were really impressive uh, and it's results that we've been seeing time and time again from our customers. Um, so again, it's not necessarily an add-on to a program, this is kind of an instead of. So we're using biology instead of using other inputs and I think that that's really where sustainable farming is kind of going and the whole regenerative approach to agriculture should be focusing. EcoT contains a lot of microbes that are actually synergistic to rhizobium. And what we've seen time and time again with guys using our product uh, in combination with rhizobium is just way better nodulation. There are something, uh, some relationships that are happening with these microbes that create a much more um, conducive environment for nodulation. We also did some work with SGS Seed Labs on germination and understanding that Western Canadian farmers have to plant into cold soil, especially if you're a large acre farmer. You really want to understand that when you're planting into cold soil, that the cold vigor of those seedlings is going to be improved, especially when you're using a biological. And we've kind of proven that with our SGS report. So here at 20 degrees centigrade, we can see that there was about 66% germination. Uh, on this wheat. Now this was a low germination wheat. It's not necessarily one you'd probably be seeing in, in your bins. We, we chose this variety just so that we could see if we could get improved germination, especially under cold stress. And uh, in fact, that is the case here. And where we uh, used the EcoT, we had about 67% germination. So when we start to look at the cold vigor, we can see that there's a 12% improvement in germination where you use the biological under cold germination. And I think this has real implications for Western Canadian farmers, especially guys that have a lot of acres to plant. If you can significantly improve that germination rate using a biological, it makes a lot of sense to start using them. Um, and we saw the same thing with peas. In this case, at 20 degrees centigrade, 
uh, you've got 79% germination, and at 20 degrees centigrade with EcoT, you're looking at about 82% germination. So a 3% difference, and 3% on a lot of acres is significant dollars. And the same thing again with the cold stress, uh, cold vigor. Here we see improvement in germination under cold stress. So that just helps to uh, show that EcoT and biologicals can in fact help with cold vigor and large farms that have large acres that are planting earlier and earlier just to get those acres planted um, have a much greater success rate when you're coupled with a biological versus nothing. Um, and again, we're seeing that kind of time and time again with the cold stress, uh, drought stress, those similar things. Turn off the tap when you have better roots, you're going to have better drought tolerance. You know, there's a few other ways that you can really start to understand how biologicals can help you on the farm. And one of those methods is actually just soil testing. Uh, so a &L Labs has a soil health test. Uh, they can give you things like biological quality, soil respiration, and from those uh, analyses, they can actually give you the total amount of mineralizable nitrogen you might have based on the biological activity that you've got going on in your soil. So again, using that information coupled with um, you know, chemical fertility, you can actually see that reduction. You know, in, in this case here, uh, you'll see that there's 52 pounds per acre of nitrogen available through biological activity. Now, not all of that's going to the plant, some of that's staying in the system, so you always have to augment that with fertilizer. But again, we're starting to use less and maintaining those high yields that we're, we're used to uh, that are bringing the profitability up in the farm. Um, there's another uh, test that they offer at ANL Labs called the Vitalis Soil Health Test, and this gives you full range of your nutrients, uh, very similar to the agronomy you're used to seeing, but then it also couples in some biological factors like biological quality index, uh, reactive carbon, and then a soil health index. And that really just helps you to understand where your soil is at and how you can help to improve it. Um, and is that something you're going to do? Um, on a larger scale or is it something you just use again like the seed dressings which in my mind the seed dressings are the most logical place for any conventional farmer to start because they're easy to use and they're very effective um, and uh, you know as input prices skyrocket and grain prices are also skyrocketing um, there's only so much that your land can produce and I think that if you're producing what your land can produce at the highest level uh, laying off some of that nitrogen is really going to help uh, improve that profitability. Um, or phosphorus for that matter, or micronutrients. Again, uh, microbes help to unlock the potential of your soil. One of the other things that we've really looked at uh, that I think is really important from a biological perspective is metagenome profiling. And here uh, we're looking at a diagram of uh, the bacterial composition of EcoT. So we've done full metagenome profiling and we understand exactly how our microbial foods and biostimulants impact our microbial community within EcoT. And these kind of diagrams really exemplify exactly what's going on uh, in these communities and what types of plant growth promoting microbes we actually have. And then we can correlate that back to our plant growth, our root development, to those kinds of things. Uh, and we have that for both bacteria and fungi. So have a look at these charts. They're really, really cool. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, but these are really, really supercharged biological communities, not just single species blends. And that's something I really want to get across. This particular slide, again, just really shows that same thing, except specifically towards our seed dressing products. And what we see here is what the community of microbes look like in our inoculums on their own, and then how those communities change once we add our um, liquid microbial foods and our dry microbial foods and sticking agents. For example, when we look at our liquid seed dressing catalyst with our liquid seed dressing, we can see that the community has completely shifted towards being dominated by firmicutes and alpha proteobacteria, which both groups have a huge amount of plant growth promoting microbes. Uh, it's one of the reasons we see such good success with this product, whereas without that catalyst, you've got a much more broad base of of bacterial species and groups that are in that product. Not they're not bad, but they're not necessarily really geared towards uh, picking up those plant growth promoters, uh, which are going to really help to improve that bottom line. 